Okay, hello everyone, and uh, uh, I'm very happy to share our some experiences with Flink and uh, Tencent. Um, the talk will be composed of three parts. In the first part, we will give a, a brief introduction to Tencent and the real-time applications and Tencent. Uh, in the third, second part, we will introduce Oceanus, the real-time platform which is powered by Flink and is deployed at Tencent to facilitate the developing and operating of Flink jobs. In the third part, I will discuss some critical issues we came across uh, uh, in the operating uh, of Flink jobs and uh, introduce some improvements we made to, to address these problems. Uh, in case you are not familiar with Tencent, um, uh, Tencent is one of the largest internet, internet companies in the world. Mm. It's, it's dominating and uh, stretching interest in various internet-related uh, products and services. Um, that includes gaming, social network, financial technologies, video, music, news, and uh, cloud services. Uh, literally, you can consider Tencent as a combination of uh, Valve, uh, Facebook, uh, Netflix, uh, Spotify, and uh, some other, other companies. <coughs> Uh, actually, most of our products is leading in China by the number of active active users. You can see, for example, the uh, our social network applications has more than one billion active users per month. Uh, this data is producing a, a huge amount of data every day, and my team is responsible to efficiently handle this data. Uh, in the past, the most data is processed uh, in offline workflows, but uh, in recent years, there is an increase, increasing demand for real-time applications. Currently, we are running thousands of real-time uh, jobs in our production environment. Uh, the real-time applications that Tencent can fall into the four categories. Um, the most uh, a uh, common scenario where real-time stream processing is, is deployed is ETL. That's because currently uh, most of our data is still uh, analysis in our warehouses. So that means we should uh, uh, connect data from our productions, uh, products and uh, perform some transform transformation, some aggregation, and then load them into our warehouses. Another common uh, user case of real-time applications is monitoring and uh, alerting systems. That would be our users, which are the developers of our products, uh, connect some metrics from our products and uh, 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 produce some, um, some alerts when we found some uh, outliers. Uh, another user case uh, is real-time business intelligence that allows our managers to uh, monitor the trends of our products, uh, make a rapid uh, decision, and to trigger the production processes, and uh, finally to gain some competition advantages. Uh, we also deploy uh, real-time applications in our search, recommendation, and uh, advertisement products. Uh, by, de by, de by detecting the user behaviors, at the real time, we can easily capture the user in, 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 interests and uh, make an accurate recommendation. Currently, uh, the, number, the maximum number of messages we received per second is more than 200 and, the, and the 10 million. And then the number of messages we received per day is more than 17 trillion. And then the amount of data is more than three petabit bytes. Uh, in the past, uh, our real-time applications are executed with Storm. Uh, but uh, in, the, in, the, in, in, the, in those years, we are also we are continuously struggling with the drawbacks of Storms. Uh, here is a typical ETL pipeline. Uh, in a typical uh, ETL pipeline, we, we get data from message queues and uh, then, then perform some uh, perform some aggregation uh, in our aggregators. And finally, they, this data, the results, is written into the files read by our data houses. 
uh, actually, the ETL pipeline works well in the simplest settings, but uh, when we want to do some optimization to our pipelines, we came across some, some challenges. Uh, for example, we want to decouple the throughput from the latency of our uh, external storages. So we use some buffers in our pipeline and uh, uh, use some uh, uh, synchronized threads to, to read data from external storage, storages. Since some does not perform any support for uh, states, so we have to maintain the stor storage of the buffers by ourselves. And uh, we also have to guarantee that the, the data in the buffers is not lost when we, when we come across failures. That is very hard because uh, 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 when we when we to perform some other uh, optimizations, it's uh, we made a lot of efforts to make the program work properly in our production environment. Uh, in two thousand and seventeen, seventeen, uh, we decided to migrate our real time applications from Storm to Flink, to Flink because. Uh, the the powerful st stress of Flink. First, it support, provides efficient support for states. It allow allow us to to efficiently maintain the storage of states and the distribution uh, distribution of states uh, in distributed settings. We are also impressed by uh, Flink, Flink's guarantee that uh, uh, the messages are processed at a, at, a, at least once or exactly once in case of failures. Uh, Flink also provide, provides flexible and powerful programming interfaces for stream processes. It allows us to uh, efficiently process uh, some com common operations in data streams like uh, windows, out of order records, and uh, progress tracking, and so on. Flink also uh, exhibits a good performance in our production environment, it can uh, hit, uh, process large-scale data streams with low latency and high throughput. Uh, then we build a unified platform to uh, to facilitate the develop and the operating of real-time uh, applications. Kind of the, uh, the platform is named uh, uh, Oceaners. Mm, Oceaners currently is uh, Providing service to uh, all business units in Tencent, including uh, search, advertisement, uh, gaming, and the social networks. Uh, the developing of real-time applications is quite easy because we provide uh, three different methods to uh, to write 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 the programs, including Canvas, SQL, and Jar. Uh, Ocean does also provide special support for machine learning jobs. Uh, we provide some uh, useful implementations of common machine learning algorithms like uh, uh, online uh, linear regression and uh, collaborative filtering. We also provide some tools to to easy the easy the uh, operations in machine learning applications like data exploration, pre-processing, uh, model training, model validation, and uh, model model survey. Uh, Ocean is also provide uh, to easy also easy the uh, operating of real time applications uh, with uh, efficient configuration and testing tools and deploying tools. Uh, uh, the canvas is the most popular uh, uh, method to develop uh, real time applications. Uh, Ocean has provide a, a lot of common operations uh, uh, in data streams. Uh, users can can develop their applications by dragging these operators and uh, config, conf, configure the pro properties of these operators. Uh, then they can connect uh, these operators to build their jobs. It's quite easy. Our users can focus on their application logic without the need to, to read about the uh, implementation details of these operators. We also provide uh, uh, string SQL and uh, data stream APIs so that uh, for our users. Uh, uh, a big problem of uh, developing real-time applications in SQL and uh, uh, 
uh, data stream APIs is that it's hard to configure uh, configure these jobs because uh, when we write our programs in SQL, it's hard to configure the uh, parallelism, uh, the name of the vertexes. Uh, data streams uh, provide some interfaces to allow such configuration, but uh, these configurations can be changed now and then. Uh, so, so we we decided to uh, to modify the deployment method. We refer, when users are developing their programs in these two, two methods, we first compile this, their programs or SQL scripts into job graphs and uh, virtualize them in the web pages. Then users can easily configure their applications with uh, virtualized job graphs. Then this, this uh, when the job graphs are, co are configure, configured, they are submitted to the, to the cluster and uh, executed there. Uh, to allow uh, to allow the efficient uh, uh, submission of jobs and the management of the job life cycles, uh, we we bypass the front end of Flink and uh, submit the jobs with re refined class clients. It allows to it easy the uh, it allows to easily obtain some uh, useful information like the application identifier of the ER jobs. Uh, we also, uh, Ocean has also improved the operating efficiency with uh, a lot of metrics connected in our running jobs. Uh, we do a lot of work in the in refining the the RESTful, RESTful API and the UI of Flink. Flink. Uh, some important metrics are connected uh, to help us uh, uh, identify the bottlenecks of our jobs. Uh, one of them, uh, in queue, in queue, the usage of the in queue and out of queue is quite quite important in our uh, operating because uh, 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 operator is a bottleneck if its in queue is full while its uh, out of queue is not. That means there must exist some mismatch between the uh, input speed and the output speed. Uh, we also we also use the throughput of operators. Uh, to determine the parallelism of the operators. That is actually is a very challenging work in our daily operating. We notice that the ratio between the throughput, uh, the, the input throughput and the output throughput of a, an operator is roughly the same when the degree of parallelism changed. So we can, uh, so when we decided to uh, set, to find a good Parallelism settings, we start the job with the parallelism of all operators set to one. Then we observe the metrics to identify the bottlenecks in the jobs and the maximum throughput of a, a, a subtask. Then we can decide the parallelism of the operators by, by dividing the design the throughput uh, by the maximum throughput of a subtask. Uh, Usually, after a few number of iterations, we can find a good parallelism settings of our jobs. Uh, we actually we have worked uh, on a script to automate the, these operations in pa parallel parallelism settings, but uh, it is very challenging because, uh, especially for the jobs with window operators, because uh, uh, window operators are idle in most of the time. And uh, when the windows are triggered, a lot of records may be, may be produced, and uh, it's very hard to, to know the number of records that are produced that when, they, when they are triggered. So uh, they still need some many work to determine the parallelism for the jobs with window operators. Another useful information we uh, we use in our operating is the uh, thread information we gathered from uh, the task executors. Uh, uh, for example, a common problem we came across in our uh, uh, daily work is uh, ch is checkpoint timeout. Uh, a checkpoint may timeout for a lot of reasons. Uh, for example, a user may write a source function which does not release the checkpoint lock uh, when they are blocked. Uh, a chip a chip may also time out when 
uh, users uh, is providing a user-defined checkpoint method, and it's, which is, uh, uh, is blocked by external storage. Uh, by checking the straight stacks, we can easily find the, 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 the problems. The thread information can also help us to identify performance issues. Uh, here is a, uh, a simple example of word count. There are two tasks in a task scooter. One is the source task, which continues pro producing uh, words, and uh, the other one is the uh, map task, which counts the, counts the, the, the words when they, they are produced. <coughs> So typically, uh, a task works, uh, works well when its CPU usage is 100%. Uh, as, you, as you can see in the, in the, in the, in the figure, that uh, the map task is, the CPU usage of the map task is nearly 100%. That means it works very, very well. It, its performance is not uh, affected by uh, locking, by our, our operations, by network, uh, the source task we can see in the figure that its CPU usage is is only eighteen percent. That means its performance is 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 affected. By examining the thread uh, thread stacks, we can find that the, its its performance is uh, always influenced by the output connectors. Uh, that's that's uh, that's that's reasonable because uh, when a word is produced. The map uh, task will uh, execute more in, more number of instructions. Uh, so, if we want to prove the performance of the job, we should deploy more number of source tasks than the uh, more number of map tasks than the source tasks. Uh, besides the uh, the efforts we have made uh, in, in improving the efficiency of developing and uh, uh, operating Flink jobs in Oceanus, we also made a lot of improvements to Flink. Uh, to, to easy the reasoning about leadership in, in, in Flink, uh, we, we rewrite the high ability services to avoid the split brain in our production environment. Uh, we also uh, develop a non-destructive non recovery of job masters to reduce the overheads of of the recovery. We also can own the uh, fine-grained recovery of tasks with cache result partitions. That is, uh, we can cache the results of the task, and uh, when, a task, when some task fails, we do not need to restart the job from the sources. We can simply restart the, the job with, uh, from the cached the, cache the results. That, that means we can reduce the number of tasks to be, reduced, to be restarted when job fails that could improve the efficiency of the recovery. We also, uh, also reworked the, the resource manager in Flink uh, so that the, mm, so to achieve five grand resource allocation. We also uh, working to improve the scheduling efficiency for large scale jobs. We also done a lot of uh, work to improve the performance and the usability of Flinks, uh, like, uh, 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 here we can talk about some details of our improvements. Uh, currently, uh, the first uh, work improvement that we have done is the uh, refining of lead coordination. Uh, in our production environment, uh, uh, Flink uh, is using Zookeeper to, to elect uh, leaders and uh, retrieve the information of the leaders. The current problem is that uh, it's very difficult to reason about leadership. Uh, for example, uh, a job master may suffer from uh, uh, a long uh, for GC when he when he granted the leadership uh, uh, during the 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 during during the period of for GC it may lost its leadership and a new job master may be started and uh, grant the leadership then he publishes uh, address on, on the clusters but when the older job master recover from the for GC. It um, may still to to publish its leadership, which overrides the the, the new job master's uh, information. That's a, that's what will cause some chaos in the in the cluster in the cluster. 
Another problem uh, we came across is that uh, when we uh, Joe Master lost his leadership, it should uh, uh, shut down the checkpoint connector immediately. Uh, mm, but uh, it, it, it's impossible in current implementation of Flink because uh, when a checkpoint connector is to be shut down, it must uh, the hold, uh, obtain the locks. But if the checkpoint connector is com completing a new checkpoint, uh, it will not release the locks. So uh, a job master may successfully complete a job checkpoint when its leadership is revoked. Uh, some, actually, we have played some tricks to make sure the, the chaos of the leadership uh, uh, does not affect the, the correctness of flink jobs. For example, we added some informal inf latches to the checkpoints so that uh, they cannot be deleted by the old uh, job masters. But uh, we want to do some, some, some other works, optimizations. For example, we want to, uh, if we want to uh, clean up the legacy checkpoint files, uh, it's impossible in current implementation because uh, there exists a concurrent modification to the checkpoints. Uh, so it's very difficult. So we, we rewrite the high ability of service with Zoomkeeper transactions. Uh, uh, it allow it's easy the reasoning about the leadership if only the job master uh, which granted the leadership can modify the states in zookeeper so we uh, so, we, so we let a, each leader contender create a informal and a sequential latches in, in zookeeper and uh, the contender with the smallest uh, uh, sequential number is elected as the leader <laughs> uh, since when, uh, when the latches are created later, must have a greater uh, sequential number. So uh, if a contender has granted its leadership, uh, its leadership is granted as long as its latch exists. So we can check the, check the, the leadership by uh, checking the existence of the, its latch. Uh, we, by combining the modification to to the state with the checking of the uh, checking the existence of the latches, we can ensure that only the job master with the leadership can modify the states. Uh, another work we have done to enhance the reliability uh, reliability of Flink is the non-disruptive recovery of job masters because uh, when our cluster is suffering from unstable zookeeper connections, all the jobs will be restarted. Uh, that will create a, a great pressure on our cluster facility like HDFS, YA, and uh, Zookeeper. Uh, so it may cause, uh, it, it will be dangerous if uh, HDFS and uh, YA is done. So we want to avoid restarting tasks when job master fails. Uh, we want to recover the job master with the information gathered from the tasks. So. Uh, we let the dispatcher to continuously monitor the liveness of job masters via zookeeper and heartbeats. When a job master fails, the dispatcher will uh, immediately uh, launch a new job master. Uh, since the dispatcher can dis distinguish between a new, new start of job master and the recovery of a, a job master, so uh, when, when job master is started from recovery, it will not schedule any tasks when uh, starts. In state, it will enter a reconciling phase. Uh, the task schedulers uh, in other side will not kill tasks when it, uh, lose, it, it uh, loses the connection to the job masters. It uh, will watch the leadership of the job master continuously and uh, register uh, registered itself to the new job master and the report the states of the tasks and the slots to the new job master. When the job master uh, receives the reports, it will rebuild the experiment graph and the slot pool with this, this, this report. That way, uh, the new job master can, can resume the execution of the jobs without uh, restarting any tasks. In the cases where uh, some tasks fail to be reported to the jobs, then the jobs will, will fail the experiment graph and, uh, uh, and recover the jobs with 
with fewer work. That, uh, that will be similar at the current state. But uh, in most cases, the job masters can, can su successfully recover the jobs. Uh, another crit critical issue we come across in our production environment is uh, uh, allocation of resources. Currently, we uh, Flink deploy tasks to task executors according to the number of available stores instead of the uh, amount of available resources. That is very dangerous in, uh, because we are exploring our Flink jobs on YAR classes. Uh, YAR will kill those containers uh, uh, who's, who, uh, who is using more resources than, than the allocate, allocated ones. Uh, so we, we, we rewrite the resource allocation protocol in our, in, our, in our Flink, so users can specify the resources uh, used by, 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 by their operators. And uh, we can calculate the resource used by slots by accumulating the resources of the operators in the in the in the slot, so we are job job master uh, request uh, resources for a slot. Uh, we it it will it will iterate over all available task executors and send its send the request to the task executor, whose available resources can satisfy the request request. Uh, currently, the number of slots in task queues is fixed via configuration, but uh, in our implementation, uh, the slots are created and uh, released dynamically. So actually, the resource uh, allocation is similar to a bin packing problem. Uh, the task executor will destroy the slot when the tasks in the slot finish. Uh, another uh, useful improvement we have done is the local kit uh, streams because um, uh, our most of our jobs is suffering from data screwness. The performance will be sig significantly downgraded by data screwness. Here, uh, for example, uh, uh, in in the program the word count, if some words appears much more than the other words, the performance will be basically name down for you because uh, only a few of the operators are working and the others are idle. Uh, to, re to reduce the, the perform downgradation, we use local aggregation. That means we perform some aggregation on the map side or the source side and uh, the aggregated uh, results, they are, they are passed to the, to the uh, reducer. That means we change the, the program from, from the upside to the program downside. Uh, it, it helps a lot to reduce, uh, to improve the performance. Uh, the local key the streams are very similar to, uh, to key the streams in terms of the users can also access states via runtime context and uh, users can also perform window operations on the local key streams. But uh, the distribution of local key streams is uh, different. Because we are partitioning the uh, data streams at the scope of tasks locally, that means each task will have a complete uh, key group range. For example, if the max parism of the operator is three, then, then all the three tasks will have the key group range of one, two, three. Uh, when the degree of parism is changed, uh, each task will have the roughly the same of local key to key groups. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the illustrated example, the first task will have five local key to groups, and uh, the second task will have four local key to groups. Well, as we can see that uh, some tasks will be assigned to some local key to groups whose, whose identifiers are identical. In such cases, we have to merge these local key groups into one. That means the, the first task will merge two local key groups when, uh, when it is restoring, and uh, the second task will, will merge in the uh, groups number the three. Uh, the merging of states is, uh, auto is easy for, for least state, reducing state, and upgrading state. 
uh, for value state and value, uh, maps, map state, users must provide the user defined merge operators. Uh, otherwise, they cannot access uh, these types of states in local kit streams. Uh, uh, as we can see in the, in the figure that uh, we compare the performance uh, of the program with uh, local operation and without local allocation. When the degree of uh, schoolness increase, we can see that the program with the performance of the program without local aggression downgrades uh, greatly, uh, while the program with local aggression is nearly not affected. Uh, we also do a lot of work to improve the usability of, of Flink. We provide more than 14 user defined functions uh, to our users to easy the development of the table API programs. We also provide the incremental windows in our table API interfaces so that users can obtain a partial result of windows. For example, our users may calculate the number of active users uh, in a day, but uh, uh, they may not want to see the results when the, when the day end, ends. They, they want to see how the number of active users increase by each hour. So we, we provide the incremental windows to, to accomplish this task. We also provide the dim join to our users. Uh, that means we carefully optimize the imputation of joins. We use a synchronized uh, operators and uh, uh, carefully uh, uh, implement the buffers to improve the efficiency. Another uh, uh, urgent uh, uh, functionality uh, needed by our users is top end operators, which is always is usually used in combination with Windows. Uh, currently, uh, Flink does not support the state can be used in Windows operators is is just a list list state, reducing state, folding state, and gradient state. Uh, so when imp so the uh, Flink does not support any sorted states currently. So the the efficiency of top operators is is not so so good. I'm, we are working on um, improve, improving the efficiency of top operators by support, by providing uh, access to sorted uh, states. We are also working on uh, refining the the interfaces of window operators so that uh, so that the user can access user defined states in window operators. Uh, in the future, we will continue our work to enhance the reliability and efficiency of Flink. Uh, the first thing we want to do is to improve the scanning efficiency because currently uh, the resource manager is single-threaded and uh, when the uh, job is very large with thousands uh, and even uh, with thousands of tasks, uh, the job will, will spend a lot of time to scaling the tasks. So we, want, uh, we are exploring the method to scheduling tasks in a distributed and a synchronized manner. We also want to unify the checkpoint mechanism for both streaming and the batch jobs. Currently, we cannot perform checkpoints when some tasks is finished in the, in the, in the job. Uh, also, our batch jobs cannot benefit from the, the, from the checkpointing because uh, when a task in batch jobs is, is fails, we, we must uh, re restart the execution from scratch. So if we can provide a unified checkpoint mechanism for both streaming and batch jobs, we can restart the job batch, batch tasks from the last uh, complete checkpoint instead of the scratch. We also considering incorporating partitioning and timing into optimizer. Uh, take a concrete example, that is, uh, uh, the, when the, the resources are very limited uh, to, to run streaming jobs, that means we cannot start the streaming task at once, uh, at the same time. Uh, currently, we can, uh, in such cases, the Flink jobs simply cannot be executed. But uh, in ideal situation, we want to partition the data streams into micro batches and perform the operations on the data streams one by one. That is a similar manner to Spark Streaming. That will help because currently uh, many of our business units do not have the efficient uh, resources. So it will help, help to, to deal with situations. And the main job 
will be executed much slower, but it can be can be executed. Uh, another another project we are working on is the SuperSQL, which is to improve the efficiency uh, of data analysis across in different details and uh, across the the data centers at different places. So we want to uh, optimize the performance by by minimizing the data num amount of data transferred in uh, between different data centers. Okay, thank you. That's it. Thanks a lot. Are there any questions? I saw that um, earlier you, you, you had some projects that were related to Flink, but not the core of Flink, uh, specifically the uh, drag and drop graph interface that allows yeah. the users to create topologies. Uh, does Tencent have any uh, plans to open source those as uh, separate uh, open source projects and contribute back to the community with those? Mm, we are planning to open source our um, improvements to Flink, but uh, since the the oceanus is closely related to our business units, because we have to some um, uh, user os 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 uh, security and policies and uh, some other information, so we maybe we cannot open source the the oceanus. Uh, of course, the 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 changes we made to the to the. Uh, to the Flink UI and uh, the deployment the method that we can we can open source it best, but it uh, needs some 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 work to 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 isolate it from from our op application logic. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. We we face similar problems at Uptake where our business logic is so intertwined with the open source interest features yeah, yeah, that yeah. we'd have to have a separate effort to tease them out before contributing them back. Thank yeah. You. So it was nice to uh, hear your discussion of um, reliability and yeah. consistency, because that's so hard to achieve in a distributed environment. Yeah. Uh, there's one man who does a lot of distributed systems testing. Uh, his first name is Kyle. It's uh, the Jetson work that he's done. He's done a lot of work on distributed databases and okay. matter of fact, Zookeeper was one of the few things yeah. that actually passed his tests. Yeah. Almost everything else failed. There's always something wrong with yeah, yeah. distributed systems and consistency. Yeah. So um, I mean I think that's something for the Flink community in general. Maybe somebody needs to uh, come up with some money to have him uh, test some of these different uh, issues that you've come across uh, so that the project can benefit from improving its reliability and consistency. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, uh, that was my concern was is that there's advertisement of consistency, but in truth, in a real system, it doesn't exist currently in the project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's maybe um, because even when the scale of the distributed system is very large, we we usually came across such uh, uh, such things. We um, actually all the concerns that we. Uh, in distributed settings, we all, we we came up with these problems in our production environment. So so that's why we are uh, we put a lot of efforts to enhance the reliability of Flink. Yeah, that that because we we can. Hmm? I think it doesn't have to be a huge system. It just has to be a system that has some processing issues. Yeah, but uh, uh, if the scale is not so large, its, it's cost is not so big. So, uh, so if we can solve the problem with just the restarting and the computing from scratch, uh, we can we can live, live together. But when the scale is very large, 
the, the occasions we, we can all stand. Yeah. All right. Thank you again. Okay. And um, I think we're already a little bit over the time, so we'll take all other questions offline. Okay. Thank you for listening.